I want to tell you the story of how I came to write this book. The book is a story of a little boy who lived over 100 years ago in South India and grew up to become one of the greatest mathematicians the world has ever known. Here, the little boy, Ramanujan, is only five years old. The story of the book begins for me too, when I was five years old. Now, when I was a little girl, I hated math in school. To me, math looked and sounded like this. The clock on my math class wall. But the math in my home was different. Math lived under the basement stairs in my father's tiny triangular office where he worked out his mathematical ideas and listened to Boogie Woogie Piano on his turntable. And drank black coffee. And wrote with blue ink on a pad of paper. Here he's writing down mock theta functions. But wait, who's that? Oh, it looks like the mock turtle. Better get him out of here, he can be quite troublesome. Actually, you better remember this guy. He'll be important later. Anyway, in my house, mathematics smelled like coffee, sounded like the blues, and looked like blue ink on a page. So even when I was growing up, I knew that mathematics was beautiful, and this was a lie. Back to when I was five years old, we moved to another house. But an even more amazing thing happened that year. We took a trip to England that would change our lives forever. We were visiting the English number theorist, Lucy Slater. She had once studied with mathematicians who had been at Cambridge during Ramanujan's time. She told my father about some boxes of papers kept at Trinity College from the estate of number theorist G. N. Watson. So not expecting much, he went off to the Wren Library. He found the box and opened it up. Very quickly, he realized that he was looking at something incredible. The work Ramanujan had been doing on his deathbed over 50 years ago. And here were the mock theta functions. Remember those? This was amazing. Mock theta functions, which Ramanujan had probably named for Lewis Carroll's mock turtle, were what Ramanujan had written about in his last letter to England as he lay dying. My father is probably the only living mathematician who could have recognized them, for no one was thinking about mock theta functions at the time, and my father had written his dissertation on them. So he took the box to the head librarian and paid 20 pounds to have it copied. But he said he would have taken a second mortgage on his house to get those pages. All I remember from that trip is punting on the River Cam that goes right in front of the Wren Library, and my father standing on the back of the boat with the punting pole, getting it stuck in the bottom of the river and still gripping the pole as the boat drifted away, falling in. But now that splashing in the river has taken on mythic significance for me, as if it represents that moment when my father reached across cultures, continents, time, to connect with the mind of Ramanujan. Since then, he has traveled back and forth to India, met with the Prime Minister, collaborated extensively with other mathematicians to bring this lost notebook to light, which has now had implications for space travel, black holes, and the computer revolution. So as you can see, I've been thinking about this story ever since I was a little girl. And since then, I've studied his mathematics in graduate school. I've gone to India and England to visit the places he lived. I've taught his mathematics to other students. And finally, I've written this book. It's the story of a child, like a lot of kids, who hated math in school. 
See, here he is running away from his teachers and classmates. But on his own, he loved numbers and all the beautiful patterns they make. So I hope someday you will read this book and discover not only Ramanujan's story, but the beauty of mathematics, and realize that math is not just a clock on your classroom wall, but is something beautiful waiting to be discovered. And hopefully this guy won't bother you too much.